what's good y'all your boy ross back out again with another video so i just finished watching the uh live stream with the homie dub for uh, friday night smackdown shout out to everyone that was part of the live stream definitely an enjoyable uh watch with you guys as always we always have a good time so we're going to talk about obviously what's going on the most noticeable stuff that was going on tonight's show and we got to talk about obviously the cody Rhodes feuding with the bloodline this new version of the bloodline once again so we started off the show with cody Rhodes. he didn't have a suit on he had on on uh he had like a uh a t-shirt like a, a ripped up t-shirt well you know was showing his sleeves and it's a nice uh design on the shirt it wasn't ripped up but the sleeves were cut off so nice uh design on the shirt you know with his uh brand logo on there came out there with sweats and uh some comfortable shoes so you knew my boy cody was about to come out there and give out some potential beats because when he in the suit he'll give out the beats but it's different when you in your comfortable uh look like some workout gear you can give the beats a little bit more effectively so he comes out there and he basically talks about you know how he feels bad about what happened to randy orton randy orton is his really good friend his mentor randy helped him get to where he is in wwe and he called him his brother and i love that they're doing this because i'm telling you this now once this bloodline stuff is done with randy is going to turn on him and they're setting it up perfectly because cody's like this is my brother this is someone i care about i really you know feel bad that he got hurt and it's going to be that much more sweeter when randy does turn on him and he gets betrayed by him because he wants one more opportunity at the wwe championship so i love that they were setting this up cody's really showing his love for randy but we know most likely it's going to end in a uh, a bad fashion once Randy comes back and they're done with the bloodline stuff. Randy will ultimately turn on him. So I like that they're still planting those seeds of Cody really trusting this guy. But he essentially talks about what happened and, you know, how he's not rocking with it. So at that point, you know, he's he's just really frustrated with the bloodline, but he's ready to go to war with them. If he has to, because I like how he brought it back to WrestleMania 39. Right before WrestleMania 39, he told Solo, you're not ready yet. It's not your time. When they faced off right before WrestleMania. And then he talked about how Solo cost him that match. Solo was the reason that he didn't win at WrestleMania 39. Now that he is the champ, <clears throat> he does hold the title and whatnot. And he basically told him again, you are still not ready. You are still not that guy. Then Austin Theory's music hit with Grayson Waller. They come out there and Austin Theory essentially is like, you know, <clears throat> the only reason why we're out here right now, because I got attacked by Jacob Fatu because of you and your situation with the bloodline. And I like the fact that uh, Cody was like, well, to be honest with you, you should have had that. You should have that same energy for your partner who needs you in the face, uh, in that uh, in that match. So, if, to be honest with you, you should have all your energy and smoke for your partner. But obviously, Grayson Wall was like, "Nah, you're trying to deflect or whatnot." So they end up getting into the ring, and Cody said, "Bro, I ain't got time for talking. I came out here to fight anyway." So he start packing them niggas up, trying to on a two v one situation. That's when uh you see Terrence Crawford, um the boxer, sitting at front row ringside, and you saw him earlier uh at the beginning of the show when Cody gave him the fist bump. You kind of knew he was gonna get involved. Uh, Terrence ended up giving Cody a steel chair to come out there and to even the odds. And that's how that segment ended up ending. So uh, we go to the back. Cody Rose like, look, man, they clearly got an issue with me. I'm ready to fight. Put me in a match against them. It can be a two-on-one handicap match against uh, Austin Theory and um, Grayson Waller. I'm here to show a message to the bloodline that I'm not playing no games and I'm not scared of them. And obviously, Nick Aldis was like, I can't have you go out there doing that, potentially get injured. So you need to find you a tag team partner. So that's the theme of the show until the main event. 
who will tag with Cody? Who will help Cody? So we cut to a another backstage segment with the bloodline sitting in this room that's all dark and stuff. And Solo um, essentially puts it out there that, you know, if anyone teams up with Cody Rhodes, that means you're against me. That means you're against the bloodline. And if you do that, we will deal with you like we dealt with Randy Orton. You will have some problems. So anybody in the locker room that teams up with Cody Rhodes, you're going to have some problems with the bloodline. And essentially, that's what it was. It was a threat to anybody in the locker room. Do not team up with him or there's going to be some issues. So we get to the uh, ending of the show. We cut to the back. Cody's walking. And then you see none other than Kevin Owens himself, the man that always stands on business. He was there wrapping up his wrist. He's like, I'm ready to go. And the camera's following him through a gorilla position all the way to the ring. Kevin Owens, he's always about timing. He's always down for a fight. That's how Kevin Owens get down. He's always down to get to to you know fight the bloodline. He's always down for the action. You do something to him, best believe he's gonna be ready to stand on business and give you the beats, no matter how many people are in the ring. So they have their match, pretty solid match, nothing too crazy. Uh, obviously the baby faces win and win and Kevin Owens and Randy Orton, not Randy Orton, uh, Kevin Owens and um and Cody Rhodes. They win. They hug and brace. That's when solo music hit. They come down there. You only see solo. You see Tamatonga and Tonga Loa. But you don't see Jacob Fatu, which I'm like, he's somewhere. He's going to attack them from behind. So they start fighting them, start packing them up. Solo is getting packed, bro. Like, solo is getting cooked out there. And of course, Jacob Fatu comes out from behind, starts packing them up. And you see. That J us uh, that um Cody once again is being held by Solo and I believe he was being held by uh, Tamatanga to hold him as Jacob Fatu starts destroying Kevin Owens, hitting him with super kicks. Then uh Kevin Owens gets in the ring, he's by the turnbuckle, and Jacob Fatu just keeps running at him, hitting him with that little hip attack. Over and over and over. Goes to the top rope. Hits a headbutt to Kevin Owens. Essentially just destroyed this guy. Packed him up. And Cody could do nothing but watch. Then they turn their attention to Cody. And they uh, throw him through the announce table like they did Randy Orton. Now initially before all that happened. It looked like Solo was about to get that same treatment. But once again, Jacob Fatu came in with the major assist. That's what he's there for, to help Solo at all costs. And the, uh, the another another shot is pretty much Solo uh, standing tall, the bloodline standing tall. But this time, Kevin Owens has been incapacitated and Cody once again packed up. Um, so the story they're telling is the bloodline is going to get rid of all of Cody's help. Randy Orton last week got packed up. This week, Kevin Owens got packed up. So now, Cody has no help. He is going into this match by himself, essentially. That This is what the bloodline plan was all about. Getting rid of anyone that will help Cody for them to make it that much easier to allow uh, Solo... Um, to become the new um, WWE champion. And it makes sense. Pack up all his allies. He's by himself. So the question becomes. What happens? How will this play out? Ultimately. I think the route they're going. Obviously. Is Roman's going to come out. Roman's going to come out there. And it's going to be fantastic. Solo's not going to know what to do. Everyone's going to be completely shocked. And what makes this so poetic? If you really think about it. Roman coming back out there. Obviously, hopefully, Paul Heyman back out there. I think that would be great. But Roman coming out there and Roman being the one essentially to stop Solo from winning and by default helping Cody retain, that is the interaction I'm most intrigued to see. 
Because here's the thing. I don't even know if you have, I don't know, maybe you have Roman attack everybody. That could be cool too. Attack the outside interference. I don't know how they do this, but I'm just waiting to see Roman after Cody does what he got to do and and pins Solo. I want to see their interaction. I want to see their initial interaction when Cody sees Roman packing up the bloodline members. I want to see that too if that does happen. Like him just like, what the fuck? And then him actually capitalizing, winning the match, as I do think he will. And that look that they may give each other, like, huh? I, bruh. Bruh. Just imagine him at the on the in, you know, Cody wins or whatnot. He's holding up the championship. And then Roman's just looking at him and looking at the title. I, 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 that's the most that's the interaction i'm really excited about i don't think many people are talking about that because that's gonna be great too because it's like yeah i helped you out but at the end of the day i want that i, I want to see what he says I, I want that i want i want my rematch oh my god so they have so many possibilities so many storylines they could do with just roman coming back it's gonna be great so comment down below let me know did you guys enjoy this episode of SmackDown? Are you guys excited to see what's going to play out with this whole Bloodline story and uh, Roman Reigns' eventual return? Keeping our fingers crossed he comes back at SummerSlam because it got to happen at that point. But appreciate all love and support. Road to 150K. Appreciate y'all kicking with me. See y'all next one. Peace.